Shalom. First and foremost, call Loyum, Wakaba, La Yahawa, Bashim, Yahushai, Bashim, Rabakak Wadash. Double honors to the elder apostles of the great Muslim who rule well. Peace, blessings, and salutations unto the for elect tabernacle of David, scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Now we know, you know, the global elite, you know, they're going to push forward with all determination to accomplish the great reset, uh, new world order, you know, which is their enterprise. But they know that they cannot move forward and achieve the, the, the objective of accomplishing the great reset, new world order, if they don't get the, the, the population of the people in order. One of the things they put the people in order is to control the food. When there's no food, people are either going to wild out and turn into animals, wild beasts, or they're going to comply. So in order for this thing to commence for them, global starvation is the key. And that's what they're doing with rolling out these uh, policies in which right now there's um, a big uproar over in uh, the Netherlands with all those um, Dutch farmers. You know, they're pretty much angry because they put out a policy that's going to regulate the uh, nitrogen emission. And in, uh, in agriculture, dealing with farming, you know, you use a uh, nitrous oxide, uh, oxide or uh, nitrogen to produce the fertilizer to, you know, deal with your, your crops and, and, and your um, your livestock. And that's what they've been using to grow their food. And, and the Netherlands is the second largest uh, exporter of meat. So we know this is all systematically done by design to, to you know, throw off the flow of uh, the global food supply. So that's why those people over there in the Netherlands are in uproar. And as it says in the scriptures, Proverbs 29 and 2, when the, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked bear cruel, the people mourn. And you see, and there's all type of groaning all across the world because they're all feeling the travail, the labor pain, the, the, the birth pains. All right. So, <clears throat> Them, those uh, farmers going out there and protesting and, you know, driving through the streets with their tractors and their equipment and uh, not tending to, you know, their duties because of this particular decree is actually causing um, basically a uh, food shortage, which is a win-win situation for the elite and a lose-lose situation for the people. Because even though they're taking a stance and they're uh, sending a message you know, with their resistance, it's still causing uh, self-affliction, all right? Because now nobody gets to eat as long as the farmers are not out there producing. So I'm going to let you listen to this little clip right here from this uh, Edomite, and it's, it's real short. And then you're going to see the results of those farmers not out there doing what they do, showing you how um, important Farmers are to, you know, your uh, your livestock, your food, your vegetation, your food coming in. So if they get affected, hey, you get affected. So let's uh, listen real quick. Matter of fact, let me um turn this down. All right, so let's uh hear it. It's apparently the second largest food ex exporter in the world i had no idea and apparently a lot of it is meat so any surprise is anyone surprised are you surprised yet still at any of this stuff that they're trying to shut down the netherlands from producing food and particularly meat right as we're going in at, the un has come out and said this is a uh, it's going to be a worldwide catastrophe it's going to be apocalyptic food shortages 
But, you know, we got to get the Agenda 2030 done. So uh, <laughs> they try to enforce all this stuff. But here's the great thing. It seems like almost everyone in the Netherlands is totally fighting back. So it's a Yeah, they fighting back. You know, there's a uh, massive protests and riots. You know, that's uh, starting to spread like wildfire throughout Europe because of, you know, because them Edomites over there, they know and they're they're seeing what's happening, you know, with with the elite. All right, so, you know, you're seeing that there's a uh, resistance. But this uh, Hegelian dialectic that the, that the uh, elite go by, they're seeing that it's in, court, in accordance with their plan because they want to. It was already the plan to starve the people out and cause the people to to, to go uh, descend into chaos because then they can bring order out of it. All right, now what that's causing as a result. And let's uh, let's let's get this real quick. We zijn aan het hamsteren bij de Alpenstraat. Alpenstraat. So you see that this store is damn near cleaned out, is, is, is damn near empty, all right, as a result, all right? And uh, when people go into these stores and see stores empty like this, when they're used to seeing everything uh, full, is when people start to panic. They start to lose their, their marbles because you rely upon food for survival. To live. What are you Americans going to do when it comes over here? Because it's going to come. Let's get uh, the prophecy in the second Ezra 6 real quick. <clears throat> you know, food is a luxury. And, and you have an abundance here. But uh, soon that's going to be you know, taken away. Right, this is uh, 2nd Ezra 6 and verse 22. It says, And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. All right, they go, your, uh, your farmers. And now with the unrighteous decree for them to um, reduce their um, output of uh, nitrogen is going to affect them, you know, um, dealing with the vegetation, planting crops. And dealing with the livestock. It says the full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. This is right here in, in Bible prophecy, man. All right. And the world's gonna experience this. And once you know that starts to happen, you know, all bets are off. It's gonna get medieval. And like it's, it, we go into it in second Ezra 15. You know, you see the people are in the uproar now. It's gonna just, it's gonna turn into, you know, kill or be killed. But it's gonna start first with people coming against the government. That's what you're seeing happening with these uprisings. All right, Second Ezra 15, and um, I'll start at uh, 14. It says, "Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and the destruction draw up nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another as swords in their hands." All right, whether it's against the government or each other, all right, and especially here in the, in the states, you know, the people are divided more than ever. And, uh, you know, Americans, you know, they're uh, they're the the main nation that's 
that's uh, general uh, public are armed. They own uh, weapons. So that's specifically for, for prophecy's sake, because it's going to get violent. It says, for there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes. And of course, if their actions shall stand in their power. And, uh, you know, they did a poll recently where um, a lot of Americans agree that it's time for them to, you know, basically arm themselves against the government. Because they don't trust, they no longer trust their own government. So it's going to boil down to, you know, you know, what are we going to do to, you know, over overthrow or overturn the tyranny that's coming from this government? Okay, I believe down in um, what country is it? I think over there in Libya, they're 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 trying to overthrow their government in in Libya. Okay, and then down there in uh. A couple of weeks back, I believe in Ecuador, they were doing the same thing. So it's only a matter of time when it gets real up here in the States. It says a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. It's going to be dangerous. And that's when Esau is going to send in the troops. And they're going to set up roadblocks. All right. Right in the entrance of the city, right at the uh, city limits. Or, or state borders. And, you know, depending on your status, you won't even be able to enter into a particular city or province. They showed, a, you know, a glimpse of that happened during um, the, the so-called pandemic. When you couldn't travel from one state to another. And if, if you was uh, considered uh, infected and you had to go into quarantine for, for two weeks. It's, it's, it's going it's going it's going uh, go go to that again but it's going to be even worse it says for because of their pride the city shall be troubled the houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor and that's where it's going to get because they're going to be desperate all right they're going to want to survive and if it's, if anybody within his vicinity or close proximity got food he's going to be willing to take that person's life in order to sustain his life. That's how it's going to get. And we, I know we go over this over and over and over, but hey, it's better to, to warn now than to be silent and then it comes upon you unawares and then that blood be upon our hands. It says, but they shall destroy their houses with the sword. They're going to go in and, and, and lay everything down. And spoil their goods, take their stuff, mainly their food, their victuals, because of the lack of bread for great tribulation. And that usually happens like in, you know, these third world poor countries in a, in a time of a famine, it gets like that. But it's definitely going to happen here in the States where everybody's so used to a gluttonous diet. You're used to, uh, you know, stuffing your, your, your belly. So when you no longer have that luxury, these people, gonna, they're going to they're gonna lose it. So just imagine, you know, with that effect taking place in Holland, where there's literally no food on the shelves because of the farmers, you know, taking it to the streets and they're not actually farming. Just imagine the effect that our food will have or our food supply will have if the truckers decided to just say, fuck this, man. The fuel is too high, plus the, the, the fuel is too low. The cost of it is too high. We can't afford it anymore. If we don't do nothing about this, we can't drive nothing into the, to the stores. It's going to be the same thing here. Then you're going to see the same empty shelves right at your local, uh, local grocery market. That's just how easy it just, I mean, the, the uh, truckers are essential to your food, getting to the stores as as the uh, farmers are or the people that produce your food which over here the farmers already been paid off to, to dump their produce going back you know over a year ago and then they've been destroying your um 
your, your, your food manufacturing plants purposely. So this is all intended by design of what's going on. And the world is uh, going to fill it. They're going to fill the travail. All right. These are all the, going into the beginning of sorrows. It talks about the beginning of war, the beginning of famine. And we're in it. Let's go to uh, Matthew 24. And six and, and you and you elites that are responsible. You know, people are they already know that you're that that you're responsible. You're the culprits. And that's why they're aiming for you, man. That's what that's why you're gonna go into hiding. You gotta that's why you got those underground uh bomb shelters and the uh bunkers. Because you know that you want it. You're you're the cause of of, of this. And this is all based on your your um your diabolical plan, the so called agenda twenty thirty, because that's what's more important. Then basically the life of humanity and everything on the earth, your desire, your that's why it says in um Habakkuk the second chapter, woe to you that that covet a uh, evil covetousness, and you got to cut off many people in order to to achieve it. This is uh, Matthew twenty four and six. It says, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And the last thing I heard. That's how um I think Sweden and Finland, you know, they're almost close in their uh membership into NATO. And Russia's uh you know responding to that. We already know that uh, NATO troops are being are, are have been increased in, in uh Ukraine, you know, the past week or so. And then you got uh you know the BRICS. Uh, increasing even got Saudi Arabia thinking about joining into BRICS. So you already know what, what this is going to cause, man. All right. All these nations are being, you know, gathered. They're choosing sides. All right. And the most sides putting, you know, one side together and the other side together. And he's going to, you know, put them against each other for this final world's war. So it's coming, man. Verse seven, it says, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. You know, China might uh, take Taiwan soon. We just got to keep our eye open. And there shall be famines, you know, orchestrated famine or actual famines. All right. Because the Lord is, is literally uh, destroying, you know, your food supply, which ultimately the Lord is doing it, whether he's using Esau to do it or not. But the Lord said it would happen. So guess what? We're here. And pestilences, all type of um outbreaks. You're seeing that constantly. Then they, now they're talking about uh it's gonna be a new wave. So Ted just came out and now he's scaring you people that soon look forward to something even greater, more powerful. And these people are gonna go back into a, a friends and you know. Which, you know, some people, they, they've woken up since the last one. So, you know, pretty much these people are sick and tired of the bullshit. So that's why you're going to constantly see more uprising, man. They know that th th this is all bullshit. That the elites, they all are trying to, you know, do what they can. All right. To, to accomplish their heart's desire, which is totally evil, man. It says, in earthquakes in diverse places, all these are the beginning of sorrows. All right. Let's get uh, 2nd Ezra 16. And verse uh, 18, it's, I'll start at 17. It says, woe is me, woe is me who would deliver me in those days. Beginning of sorrows and great mornings. Beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear at the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. And I believe when you read Sirach the 40th chapter, it says these things were all created for the wicked. And uh, basically uh, for their sakes, the flood came. 
And you see wickedness is at an all-time high. All time. You see? You know, that whole Roe Ro versus Wade thing and the demons that's on these people that's out there. You know, on these women. You know, it's getting, uh, it's, it's getting pretty sick, man. So this is the Lord, you know, he's uh, bringing judgment down. It says, but for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness. So they're going to harden their necks until the Lord continue to destroy them. Nor be always mindful for the scourges. Okay. So, yeah, the, these are all scourges. This is, the, this is the whip you jakes to, 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 you know, get you in order. But a lot of you are not going to repent. You know, why should you be stricken anymore for you revolt more and more? So the Lord's going to continue to turn these plagues up and use this devil, which is the sword of the Most High. All right, it says, Behold, vittles shall be so good cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. And even then shall evil grow upon the earth, sword, famine, and great confusion, chaos. For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine, so they're going to starve. And the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. And I believe uh, somewhere in Africa, you got women that are actually burying their their uh, children that are starved to death. You know, so it's man, it's gonna get crazy. But this is all gonna lead to uh, unrest. All right, insecurity, instability. Uprisings. Let's go to uh, Luke 21 and 9. In Luke 21, verse 9, it says, But when you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. And uh, we look up commo uh, commotions in this uh, precept. Akatastasia, Akatastasia, and it means instability, a state of disorder, disturbance, confusion, all right, like it says back in, in the scripture, evil shall grow upon the earth, sword, famine, and great confusion, so it's going to be uh, chaotic worldwide, because these people are being starved. All right, they, they're getting their humans right, you know, taken from them. Because the devil is coming down with great wrath, knowing that he had but a short time, man. All right, and he really thinks he got till 2030. Well, the Lord, you know, he got, you know, we all on the Lord's timing. But that goes back to the pride of this devil, you know, thinking that he's going to dwell um, forever. Uh, but you look at Strong's definition for this term, it says instability, i.e. disorder, commotion, confusion, tumult. And it says down here of dissensions, of seditions. So, you know, we already read in the prophecy that's going to be sedition among men. All right. So, you know, just imagine, you know, this trickles down worldwide and over here in the States where everybody's uh, used to eating. It gets like this where it's empty. That's what you're going to see. You're going to see instability. You're going to see chaos. And then you're going to eventually see the troops on the streets to regulate it. And this is what the elites want. All right? So anyway, you know, Lord willing, you know, this was edifying. I just want to shed a little light on, you know, the situation going on over there in the, in the Netherlands. All right? Those people there are aware out there in, in, in uh, those European countries. You people still over here in America, you know, not, not enough of you got your eyes open. You still got your head stuck in the sand. All right, still, you know, engulfed in entertainment, you know, still high. All right. Still, you know, freaking off. You ain't even thinking about what's getting ready to happen. That's why the scriptures tell us to not... Um, let us not sleep as do others, but watch and be sober. All right. Uh, walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the times because the days are evil. But we got to constantly watch, man. Well, anyway, you know, Lord willing, I hope this was edifying. 
and I'm gonna give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh Shai. Shalom.